Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Flink Forward, brought to you by Data Artisans. Hi, this is George Gilbert. We are at Flink Forward, the conference for the Apache Flink community, sponsored by uh, Data Artisans, which is the company commercializing Flink. And we have with us now Enrico Canzieri. Hey, wait a minute, I didn't get that right. Canzonieri. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Sorry, Enrico, from Yelp. And he's going to tell us how sort of Flink has taken Yelp by storm over the past year. Why don't we start off with where you were last year and um, in terms of the, your data pipeline and, and sort of what challenges you were facing. Yeah, sure. So we, we had a, a Python uh, company in the sense we've developed most of our software in Python. So until last year, we had uh, most of our stream processing was happening in Python. We had developed an in-house uh, framework uh, that was doing Python processing. And uh, that was really what we had. Uh, there was no Flink running. Um, most of uh, the applications were built uh, around a very simple interface that was uh, process message function, and that was uh, what we expected developers to use. So no real abstraction there. Okay, so in other words, it sounds like you had a discrete task, you know, request response or a batch, and then it handed off to the next function, and that's, is that what the pipeline looked it, like? The, the pipeline uh, was more of a, a streaming pipeline where we had a Kafka topic in input, and uh, we had these uh, developers would write this process function, process message function where each message would be individually processed. Oh. Uh, that was a kind of the um, semantic of the pipeline there. And then we would get the result of that processing task into another Kafka topic, and then get another processing function ah. on top of that. So, uh, we could have very easily two or three um, processing tasks um, all connected by Kafka topics. Um, obviously, there were like big limitations uh, of that kind of uh, architecture, especially when you want to do something more advanced uh, that can include uh, I don't know, windowing, aggregation, or es especially uh, state management. Because, um, well, Kafka has several layers of abstraction and. I guess you'd have to go pretty low level to to get the like the windowing, all the windowing and state management capabilities. Yeah, it becomes uh, really hard. You basically have to um, implement by by yourself, unless you're using you are on the um, maybe Confluence pl platform or you're using uh, like what they call Kafka streams. Uh, but we are not using that. Oh, not okay. Uh, so uh, obviously we had to. Uh, we were trying to implement that on top of our Python uh, simple framework uh, from zero. So tell us um, how the choice of Flink, you know, where, sort of, where did it hit your awareness and where did you start mapping in into this, you know, this need for this, this pipeline that was yeah. Python based? Yeah, uh, so we had a really, uh, I think, two uh, main use cases. Uh, this was last year. Uh, that we were struggling to get right and to really get working. Uh, the first one uh, uh, was a connector and the challenge there was to aggregate data locally, uh, scale it to um, hundreds of uh, streams, and then once we aggregated the data locally, upload the data on S3. So there was a, one application. We were really struggling to get that to work um, because of, uh, like we, in the, the framework that we had, we had no real abstraction for windowing, so we, were, we had this message, process message function that was trying to implement all of that, um, and also, because we were using a very low level Kafka uh, consumer primitives, uh, uh, getting scalability uh, was not that straightforward. Um, so there was one application that was pretty challenging. The other one was really uh, a full, uh, um, pure stateful application uh, where we, um, we needed to retain the state uh, forever. It was doing a window join across streams. Uh, so obviously the challenges in that case are even harder more because we have to implement uh, uh, state management uh, from the ground up. And all the time, uh, time semantics. Like yeah, uh, we, we have basically no even time semantics. No we were not time. supporting that. Uh, okay. Uh, there was a, so we looked at Flink because of event, event time support. So now we could actually do event time processing. State management support already implemented. You know, like it's way different than implementing it from the ground up. 
And then, uh, uh, obviously, the abstraction, so the streaming primitives. You have uh, windows that are, you, know, you have a, a nice interface that you can use that makes uh, developers who are writing code, uh, it becomes easier for them. Uh, so, so let's start with the state management. Um, help us walk through, like, what, what um, capabilities in state management does Flink have relative to sort of the l lowest level abstraction you were using in, in Kafka? or perhaps you know what Spark structured yeah. streaming yeah. might provide? Yeah, uh, so I, I think uh, the nice features uh, in streams are really around the fact that the state management is implemented and fully supports the clusterized approach of Flink. So for example, if you're using Kafka, uh, Flink already pro in the Kafka connector, Flink already provides a way to represent the Kafka state uh, of the, the state of a Kafka consumer. Um, it also, for operators, uh, if you have a flat map uh, or you have a window, window, state for Windows is already fully supported. So if you are accumulating events in your window, you don't really need to do them nothing special. Uh, the, the, the state will be automatically maintained by the, uh, the, by the Flink uh, uh, framework. That means that if Flink is taking a snapshot, so a checkpoint or a save point, uh, all the state that was there, will get uh, stored in the checkpoint that you will be able to recover. For the full window. Yeah. It's like, because so, it understands the win the yeah. concept of the window yeah. when it does a checkpoint. Yeah, because it's a, like, it's a native, uh, there's a native support uh, uh, in Flink for that. And and what does, what's the advantage of having state be integrated um, with the compute um, as opposed to compute and then some sort of API to a separate state manager. Yeah, it's definitely like code clarity. Uh, I mean, and the, it's a, a big simplification of how you implement uh, uh, your code, your, uh, your streaming application. Because in the end, uh, if for every uh, stream processing application, you need to go ahead and implement or define, uh, implement basically the way your state gets stored, that really makes a very complex application, uh, especially on the maintain, uh, for, ma for maintenance. So. In, in Flink, you kind of focus on the business logic. So we, we actually did some uh, tuning uh, on the state management that was necessary, but the tuning that we did applies in the same way across all the applications we built. Uh, then users who want to build an application, they focus on the business logic that they want, and they have, um, I would say, the state, is, the state is more kind of declarative. You say you want this map, you, you need this list in the state as part of the state, and Flink will take care of uh, actually making sure that the, uh, that gets into so the So the sort point. of semantics of state management are built in at the compute layer as opposed to going down to an API for a separate service in other implementations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, we have, we have just a minute left. Tell us about some of the things you're looking forward to doing with, with Flink and uh, are they similar to what uh, the, the DA platform that's coming out from from data artisans, or are there you know or do you have like still a whole bunch of things on the uh, data pipeline that you you want to accomplish with just the core you know functionality? Yeah, we definitely. Um I will say one of the features that we are uh, really excited about is the uh, stream SQL. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, I, I see a lot of potential there uh, for uh, new applications. Uh, we actually use stream SQL uh, in, uh, at Yelp. We deploy that as a service, so it makes it easier for users to deploy and to develop uh, stream processing applications. Uh, we, we, we definitely uh, are planning to expand our Flink deployment, uh, introduce new, new apps. Um, and um, especially w one of the things that we try to do is um, especially building reusable components uh, and, uh, and trying to deploy the reusable components that are very coupled with the way we think about our data pipeline. Okay, so um, um, would it be fair to say that uh, can you look at the, at the DA platform and say for companies that are not quite as sophisticated as you, that this is going to make it easier for you know mainstream companies to to build and deploy, yeah, operate. I, I, I see good potential there. Um, I I was looking at the presentation uh, in the morning. Um, I, I like the integration with Kubernetes for sure. Since the way, uh, that's where uh, kind of the 
the current trend uh, for uh, uh, application deployment is going. So yeah, I definitely see potential. Uh, I think for Yelp, uh, we clearly have a, like a complex enough deployment and you know, like service uh, integration that is, it won't probably be a good fit for us. Uh, but probably companies that are approaching uh, uh, the road to Flink um, now and they will probably have a, I don't know, like already an existing Kubernetes deployment, they may probably give it a try. Okay. All right, Enrico, we gotta, we gotta end it there, but that was very helpful. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me here. Okay. And this is George Gilbert. We are at Flink Forward, the Data Artisans Conference for the Apache Flink community. Um, and we will be right back after this short break. Thank you.